We want to welcome everyone here to the Somerset Church this morning. We appreciate you coming to be with us on this Easter Sunday morning. And uh, just I thank God because of His presence. I thank God for the excitement that we have been feeling this morning and also coming into this weekend. And uh, I know that you're going to be touched. You're going to be blessed. I have been asked to announce to let you know so that way you'll be a little prepared that um, during the drama, some of the sound effects is going to be kind of loud. So uh, if you have your hearing aids, you may want to turn them, adjust them. If your ears are like mine, you may want to just try to adjust them without the hearing aids. So, uh, but it is so good to have you with us today. I want you to feel the presence of God. I want you to open up your heart. And I want you to be real with God today and allow God to be real with you. And if you'll do that, there's not one of us that will leave this place the same that we came in here today. Uh, we are starting revival today with uh, Brother Harold Hanks. He's a missionary. He's a evangelist. He's a pastor. I think he's done a little bit of everything in the church. But his greatest heart desire is to see just as many people want to the kingdom of God Amen. and live for Jesus Christ. And I, I know that God's going to use him. I'll be telling you a little bit more about Brother Hanks in a few moments. But if you get a chance, come on back and be with us tonight and all this week through Friday night. Okay, and uh, we'll be starting our services at 7 o'clock, Monday through Friday. And tonight is at 6. Will you stand with us? We're going to go to the Lord together in prayer. And after we pray uh, this morning, instead of using the PowerPoint, there should be a church hymnal there. And I believe that's what they're going to be using. So... You'll have to sing along out of that old church hymnal again. But let us pray. Father, thank you today for your love, your grace, your mercy. Thank you to God today because everyone that is chosen to be here in the house of God. And I am praying for the anointing of God to flow in this place. Lord, let every heart be touched today. Let the power of God be so real. God, let hearts be changed. Let our understanding to God be touched and opened up. Lord, I think about what you said about the Pharisees because you said, Lord, that their eyes have been blinded to the truth. But God, I'm asking you, Lord, to open our eyes to see the truth and have the understanding of God. And Father, we fail not to give you the praise and glory and honor. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Let's worship the Lord together. Praise the Lord. Stay standing. Open up your hymnals to page 177. Are you washed in the blood? Jesus, for the cleansing power, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you full in your singing of His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood in the soul cleansing blood? Savior side, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest in fulfilled in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? For your garments spotless are they white? Oh, yeah. 
glad that we serve a risen Savior. He is alive. He's not dead. He is alive. And I sure do thank God for that. You know, there's a lot of people today that they pray to God that cannot move. And if He cannot move, then how can He move for you and I? But our God is on the throne and He is alive and He can move. And He'll move for you and I. Wow, what a beautiful congregation this morning. Just appreciate every one of you being with us. We want to take a moment to worship the Lord through giving unto Him. How many of you know it's a blessing to be able to give unto the Lord? Yes. Amen. Just give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Oh, come on, man. We can do better than that. We're worshiping the King of Kings. Hallelujah. Praise God. Our ushers are coming to serve you this morning. So as they come, I just want you to prepare to give unto the Lord. Uh, God has just really been blessing the church and he's blessing you and I and we have so much to be thankful for today don't we I mean so much and I just want to praise him I tell you God's good to us you know that God is so good to us and as you give today I want this just to be a form of worship I want it to be a way in which that you can show your praise unto the Lord thank you thanking the Lord for all of his blessings everything you have today is what God's already given unto you Right? And so anything that we give back unto Him is just what God has already lent unto us. Amen. And I just praise God for all of His blessings. Brother Simmons, will you pray God's blessings on the offering? Father God, we're so thankful this day that God, we come and worship You on this Easter Sunday where Christ risen from the dead, Lord. I thank You, Lord, for saving me. And Lord, just working everything out in my life. And Lord, I ask Your blessings upon this congregation. If there's one here, God, that don't know you, Lord, I pray, God, that you go in and touch their hearts, God. God, if there's a need here, I know you can supply every need. And we give you the praise, honor, glory for it. Bless the offer, Jesus, for thy honor and glory. Pass it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I serve a risen Savior. 
And we can know that because he lives within our heart. Thank you again for being with us on this beautiful Easter morning. And uh, I want to invite all of you back to be with us tonight. The rest of the week, we're going to be in revival. I just pray this morning, though, that God will reach down and touch you in a very special way. There's a couple of announcements I'd like to make and really encourage all of you to pick up a bulletin in the foyer. We have a, a meeting coming up this Saturday for all of our volunteers, those who would like to be volunteers, uh, to be in the fellowship hall at 10 o'clock Saturday morning. It's going to be a very informative time, a very important time. So please do your best to come on out and be with us on that day. And uh, I just appreciate all of our all of our workers anyhow. I really do. We have a, a great team of Sunday school teachers, Wednesday night teachers, and uh, just a great team that's working all the way around. May the 5th, mark this down on your calendar. You may say, uh, Pastor, we don't come to this church. On May the 5th, I'd love to have you come. This is our friend's day. And following the service, we are going to be having lunch for everyone. You don't have to worry about bringing anything. Everything is going to be provided and we just want you to come as a friend, and we want you to enjoy the fellowship and the friendship that is uh, coming from this church. I'm just looking forward to God doing so many great things right here in this church. I'm also going to ask you, if you can, during this drama, please try to stay out of the middle aisle. They're going to be coming back and forth, so try to keep everything that we possibly can out and just watch out for these people. If they hit you, we are not responsible, okay? Some of these people, they really get into their acting. So uh, also, uh, let me introduce to you Brother Harold Hanks, Evangelist Harold Hanks, Missionary Harold Hanks, and to a lot of you, it's just Papa Hanks. Yeah, and uh, I, I think that uh, Brother Hanks has been around this church probably longer than some of you have. You know, uh, he was preaching revivals back in the early 80s here. 41 years ago. 41 years ago, he preached his first revival here. All right? Amen. It's all right. Give him a hand. Here he is back with us on this Easter uh, Sunday morning, and we're just going to enjoy the Word of God that he is sharing. God has taken this man many miles uh, since that time. I would dare say that 41 years ago, if you'd ask him how involved he would be in missions, he'd probably say, I'm just going to be an evangelist and run around the state or the states. But God has taken him into several different countries, and God is blessing him now to where that he is going back. And uh, he's helping to teach and train ministers, uh, set churches in order, and to sponsor other pastors that are staying. In fact, he has some of his team that has just moved to other places. That's how much they, they have got involved in missions. And uh, immediately following the drama this morning, Brother Hanks is just going to be coming right after that. So once again, I just want you to be prayerful, be mindful of where we're at today. And once again, please help us by keeping this aisle open just as much as possible, okay? I want you to pray with me before that they start. And let's ask God to fill this service today with his presence. Can we do that? Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm asking you, Lord, that you would just take over today. God, that this house will be filled with your presence. And Lord, every heart is going to be touched. God, there may be some that are here today that have come just to please a family member. But God, I'm praying that today will be a day that something miraculous will take place in their heart and in their life. God, there will be an eternal change. And Lord, for those today that may need a touch of encouragement, God, those that may need their faith to be strengthened, I just pray that the Holy Ghost will move today. And Father, will fail not to give you the praise in Jesus' holy name. Amen.
He wore a crown of thorns upon his head, and he bore with every step the scorn of those who cried out for his death. Down the Via Dolorosa, home away of suffering, like a man in the Messiah. about the sixth hour. The darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour, the sun's light. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? But knowing all things were accomplished, he said then, 
It is finished. Crying in a loud voice. Father, into thy hands. He gave up the ghost. Now the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was red in twain from the top to the bottom. And when the centurion that stood by over all saw what was done, he said, Truly, this was.
Praise the Lord. What a powerful, powerful drum. Wow. It's amazing. They spent a lot of time and effort in it, put it into that. And what a marvelous, marvelous thing it is. I want to tell you something this morning. Jesus came. Jesus died. And Jesus rose again. I'm going to say that again. Jesus came. And Jesus died. But Jesus rose again. Amen. Now why is that significant? Because if he didn't rise again, we're in trouble. Amen. So we're in trouble. Amen. If the tomb was not empty, we're in danger this morning. Thank God he did that for you and he did that for me. If there was no resurrection, there'd be no need for a crucifixion. Did you hear me? If there was no resurrection, there'd be no need for a crucifixion. Jesus was crucified and he died. There's a lot that believe in the swoon theory today that he didn't really die when they put him in that in that tomb that he that coolness just brought him back to life. Well, Josephus said that numbers of his own friends were crucified and, and even some of them were taken down before they died and given medical attention and they still died. No, Jesus died, but he rose again from the dead. And if Jesus had not risen from the dead, then his death would have been in vain. So why would God want to send His Son if all that would be in vain? It's not. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 15 and 16, For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And so if there's no resurrection, Jesus is still in a tomb somewhere. He's dead and it means nothing to us. But I want to tell you this morning, He is alive. Verse 17, He said, And if Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain and ye are yet in your sins. Thank God this morning I'm not in my sins. Thank God this morning there is hope because Jesus came and Jesus died and Jesus rose again on the third day. Think about it. In John chapter 20, we have a wonderful account of that. And Mary Magdalene got up very early that morning, that first Easter Sunday morning, and made her way to a tomb. She was expecting to find a Roman guard. She was expecting to find a stone rolled over the entrance. And she was expecting to see there maybe a uh, uh, just all of that and Jesus still in the tomb but when she got there was she ever surprised did she not even get the surprise of her life she did that morning because when she got there there were no soldiers and when she got there there was no uh, stone over the mouth of that cave and when she got there there was no Jesus hallelujah <laughs> Can you imagine how she must have failed? She's looking everywhere. What happened? What's going on? She runs back to tell Peter and John they couldn't stand it either. And so they take off from the tomb. And the Bible said that John outran Peter. When he got there, he looks into that tomb. Amen. All of a sudden, Peter overtakes him. And Peter doesn't just look in. Peter goes into the tomb where Jesus lay. Hallelujah. John coming behind him followed him in there that they saw something in that tomb. Something that got their attention. Something that, that caught their, their attention. And when they went in, the Bible said, and John <coughs> believed. <coughs> and John believed. So it seems that when they got there, they were skeptical. Amen. But when they saw what was in the tomb, they became believers. Think about that. They became believers this morning. Peter therefore went forth and the other disciple and came to the sepulcher. So they ran both together and the other disciple outran Peter and came first to the sepulcher and he stooping down. Look at him and saw the linen clothes lined, yet he went not in. Then come with Simon Peter following him, went into the sepulcher and see if the linen clothes lie and the napkin that was about his head not lined with the linen clothes but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went also the other disciple which first came to the sepulcher and when he saw he believed. 
So John gets there first. He stands on the outside looking in. Peter comes second and goes in, and John follows him, and what he saw changed their whole life. You see, there's two types of people here this morning. There are those who I know about Jesus. They know about His coming, His death, His burial, and His resurrection, but it's had no effect upon their lives. They're still living their life in sin. They're going about their own merry way. And they're going to be lost. And they're going to end up in a place called hell. And ultimately, a place called the lake of fire. Separated from God, from mercy, and from family and friends. Oh, they know all about it. But they're skeptical. And they know all about it. But they want to live their own way and do their own thing. They don't want to live for a risen Lord. Are you one of them this morning? Are you here today? And as Brother Spratlin said, you're just here to appease a family member. Are you just here because that's a tradition in your family that you always go to church on Easter Sunday? Oh, you know about Jesus. And you know about the resurrection. And you know about all of that, but it has never affected your life life and I feel very sorry for you this morning because you're going to live your whole life and you're going to die Jesus said I'm the first fruits of the resurrection we talked about that in Sunday school if the first fruits then there's more coming after that Amen. <laughs> that's us hallelujah Amen. Those that die in Christ are going to rise again and they're going to be with Him forever. And then there's another uh, group here this morning. Those that have seen and those like John who have believed. Hallelujah. The word believe here means to trust in, to follow after, and to fully obey. Can I ask you this morning, have you trusted Jesus uh, as your Savior? Are you following after Him with all of your heart? And are you fully obeying Him? If you are, then you've been born again. If you are, you're on your way to heaven. If you are, then you're looking for a glorious resurrection one of these days called the rapture of the church. But if not, then you're lost and you're on your way to hell. And you will be lost for eternity if you do not repent of your sin and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And this morning, you have an opportunity to do that. You are fortunate that you're still alive. You're fortunate that you're still breathing. You're fortunate that you still have a chance and an opportunity to repent of your sin. God has given you that opportunity this morning in this place. Hallelujah. And so I'm thinking about all that's taking place and I'm, I'm asking myself a question. What was it that John saw in that tomb that made the difference in his life and made him become a believer? Very simple. It was the grave clothes and the napkin. Do what, Papa? I said it was the grave clothes and the napkin. You got to be kidding me. You mean they, he saw a merely cloth and that changed his life? Well, what the cloth was around and what the cloth represented changed his life. Amen. When John saw them, he left a believer. Now, why would that cause him to believe? Because those grave clothes and the napkin were a message to John and to every one of us. Do you realize this morning that Jesus has sent you a message? Whether you're a sinner or whether you're a saint, the tomb and what's in the tomb sends every one of us a message. And what is that message? The first message is that I am alive. Hallelujah. He said, I was dead, but I am alive forevermore. And I have the keys to death and hell. I'm telling you this morning that Jesus is alive. He didn't swoon on the cross and come back to life in the tomb. He was resurrected by the power of God. He is the first fruits of that resurrection. And those of us that are born again are going to be the second and the third and the fourth and the five millionth. We're going to be raised 
changed in his likeness and in his image and we're going to spend eternity with him. Those who do not know him are going to be lost forever in the lake of fire. And so the empty grave clothes proved to John that Jesus was alive. Not only did he see the grave clothes, but notice the Bible said he saw the napkin. Now the napkin's very interesting to me because it didn't just lay there. It had literally been folded up and laid to the side. Somebody had to do that. Amen. Somebody had to do that. Jesus did that. You know why Jesus did that? Because it was a sign to them, a message to them. Let's look at that message this morning. What did it mean? It meant first that he wasn't finished yet. You see, in that day, if a master was a wealthy man, he had a lot of servants or slaves. And especially at supper time, they watched him very carefully. And when the master was eating, uh, when he got finished, uh, he would take his napkin uh, and wad it up and put it in his plate. Uh, and when he did that, uh, then all the servants knew he was finished. It's over. Hallelujah. They would come quickly and take the plate away and bring the dessert and bring whatever was next. Uh, and so they watched him very, very carefully. But if he had to leave for a moment, uh, then he would take his napkin uh, and he would uh, fold it up and he would lay it to the side. That was a message to the servants that he wasn't finished yet. He'd be back in a little bit. Amen. And so Jesus took the napkin and he folded it up and he laid it to the side because he was saying, I'm not finished yet. Hallelujah. I'm not, oh, I feel like shouting a little right there. I'm not finished yet. As a matter of fact, I'm just getting started. Hallelujah. What are you talking about, Brother Hanks? Well, when Jesus folded that napkin and laid it aside, he stepped out of that tomb and he just got started. Amen. What do you mean? Well, he just got started saving lost souls. Think about it up until that time. Most of those that had been born again, most of those that have been saved were only Jewish. Amen. Primarily the, the gospel had been given to the Jew. Salvation had been given to the Jew. But when Jesus stepped out of that tomb that morning. He said, now the gospel is for everybody. Not just the Jew, but to all the rest. He was saying, I'm not finished saving souls. I'm just getting started. Hallelujah. And, and so he cries out, look unto me, all ye ends of the earth, and be thou saved. And so now, Brother Rick, it's not just for a Jew, but it's for you and I that are Gentiles that were away from God and away from His mercy and away from His grace. But when Jesus rose, He said, I love everybody. I died for every soul. It doesn't matter whether they're Jew or Gentile. They belong to me and I want to save them. Hallelujah. And that's why He cried, Come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Notice all ye. That includes me. That includes you. Now if you look at that verse, in the original, it's a picture, a word picture. And it's very interesting because it's the picture of a donkey that's overloaded. Did you hear me? It's a picture of a donkey that's overloaded. And the donkey is about to collapse under the weight of the load. You want me to tell you what the heaviest load you'll ever carry is? The load of sin. That's right. Amen. Amen. The load of sin. But Jesus said, if you're burdened down, you can come to me. If you're messed up, you can come to me. Amen. We were here yesterday and they were finishing practice and Brother Ed was telling me about Robert, the young man that played Jesus this morning. For years, his life was messed up. Apparently, he must have been an alcoholic. But he's not this morning. Amen. Amen. You know what he said? He said, I am free. Yes. <laughs> I can't 
came by to tell you that Jesus is still in the freeing business this morning. He delivers men from sin. If you're here today and you've never been born again and you're carrying around the heaviest weight you'll ever carry and that is the weight of sin. But I want to shout it today. You can get rid of that heavy weight. All you have to do is come to Jesus and cast your weight of sin on him. I'm telling you, Jesus is in this place this morning. He's here. And you can drop that heavy load and you can walk out of here different. Second, he was saying, I'm just starting to sanctify folks. The writer of Hebrews made a statement. Jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood suffered without the gate or the camp. You see, Jesus shed his blood so that you and I could be delivered from sin and its power. Hallelujah. If you're here today and you're, there's something in your life that God's not pleased with, can I tell you the blood of Jesus can deliver you from that this morning? Can I tell you you can walk out of here free indeed? We're all Robert walk out of here one day free by the power of God. And God doesn't love Robert any more than he loves you. And if you'll call on the name of Jesus, you can be delivered from whatever has you bound this morning. He was saying, I'm just getting started filling folks with the Holy Ghost and power. In John 16 and 7, he said, it's necessary, expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come. But if I depart notice, I will send him unto you. Now why was that significant? Because Jesus in his natural body can only be in one place at one time. But the Holy Ghost being spirit can be in every place at all times. Amen. So Jesus said, man i got to get out of here. I'm limited in my ability in this human body. But I'm going to send you one that's unlimited. Unlimited in ability. Unlimited in power. And unlimited in the ability to comfort you and help you. I'm I'm going to send you another comforter which is the Holy Ghost. Now what thrills me about that is a lot of people are doubting that Jesus rose from the dead or went back to the right hand of the Father. I don't doubt it at all. Why? Because he said if I depart I will send him <laughs> unto you. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 33 the Bible said in he Jesus be it by the right hand of God exalted having received of the Father the, the gift of the Holy Ghost or the promise has shed forth this abroad which you now see and hear. In other words, the day of Pentecost proved that Jesus rose from the dead and ascended to the right hand of the Father. When the Holy Ghost was poured out on this earth, it proved that Jesus was alive. Ooh, hallelujah. Not only is he alive, but he is the Holy Ghost baptizer. And if you've never been filled with the Holy Ghost, he wants to fill you this morning. He said, I'm just getting started healing folks. Ooh, I like that. Amen. Matthew 8, 17 tells us himself, Jesus took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. In other words, Jesus paid the price that you and I could be healed in this generation. Somebody help me preach right here. Amen. Man, has anybody ever been healed by the Lord? Raise your hand. Look at that. Look at that. Amen. I'm telling you, we serve a healing Savior today. Amen. Jesus uh, is in the healing business. Uh, I work, I've been in 49 countries of the world, and I work uh, all over the place, and I get an email not too long ago uh, from a pastor, and uh, he was telling me, he was in Uganda, and he said, Papa, I, I, I got a call the other day. He lives 35 miles out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, it's just unbelievable. And uh, we bought him a motorcycle and he goes back and forth and works all over the place. And he wrote me and he said, Papa, I said, I got a call the other day. And he said, we understand that you believe in praying for the sick. He said, oh yes. Hey, I believe that Jesus still heals in our generation. He said, well, we have an unusual case and we need you to come to town. There's a young girl that was involved in an accident and she has been in a coma now for over 30 days. And her body is shutting down. They call the family in and uh, they don't give her any hope at all. And uh, But they want a preacher. And if you would come, they would like for you to come and pray for them. And So he said, I got on that motorcycle and I went to town. Well, that means that when he got there, all you could see was the whites of his eyes. 
Because he had to ride down a clay road for 35 miles and he's completely covered in clay. So all you can see is the whites of his eyes. He said, I, I look terrible. He said, but I walked in to the hospital room and there they were. The girl was in a coma with a, with a, with a tube down her throat and said, all oh, the family's crying and praying or crying and weeping. And, and I said, I walked in and said, I look like something from Mars maybe. And he said, they all looked at me. And then they start telling me about all the problems. He said, I just held my hand up. said, I don't want to hear nothing. I, I just want you to walk out. Amen. And they kind of looked at him funny. He said, I said, just walk out. He said, they all walked out. And said, Papa, I just walked over to that, that young lady. And I knelt down by the bed. And said, I looked her in the eye. And I rebuked death in the name of Jesus. Say, said, when I did, said, her eyes popped open. And she sat up in the bed. She's trying to pull that tube out of her throat. The nurses come running in. What's going on? What's going on? I'm healed by the power of God. Say, Papa, when I walked out, she walked out with me. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me this morning? I'm telling you, Jesus rose from that grave. And he said, I'm going to save. And I'm going to sanctify. And I'm going to fill with the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to heal. Hallelujah. I'm just getting started. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Just getting started. And he said, I'm just getting started supplying folks' needs. Ooh. You have a need this morning? Do you need the Lord to do something for you this morning? He's the need supplier. Philippians 4.19, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. I don't know what you came here needing, but I can just tell you Jesus can meet that need this morning. And then finally, the folded napkin also meant, I'll be back. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not finished yet. I will be back. Hallelujah. I'm telling you this morning, Jesus is coming back again. I said, I'm telling you this morning, Jesus. It's coming back again. Some of you have heard that, uh, but you don't believe it. Well, Jesus gave us his word on it. John 14 and 1, he said, let not your heart be troubled. Uh, you believe in God, believe also in me. Now, there's the problem. Uh, you see, in our generation, you can believe in any God you want to believe in. Uh, but if you go to talking about Jesus, it makes them mad. Come on, you can talk about all and nobody said nothing. Buddha, nobody will say nothing, but don't talk about Jesus. They ain't going to listen to you. They're going to make be mad and get angry at you. But listen, Jesus said, you believe in God, that's good, but believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not true, I would have told you, but I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am that thrills me there ye may be also listen he's not just a king that's going to sit on a throne and we're not going to have any access to him he is king of kings and lord of lords but he's more than that he is our savior he is our brother he is part of our family we're a part of the family of God and we're going to live with him forever and ever he said, I will. Not I might, or maybe I will. I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And then Jesus gives us signs, does he not? That would tell us that we are approaching his soon return. All of those signs are coming to pass this morning. Here are just a few of them. Wars. Anybody heard about any wars lately? Rumors of wars. Come on, amen. Earthquakes. Earthquakes. I was in Guatemala just a few weeks ago, five weeks ago, and now they're having earthquakes every day. They said the day after we left, they started. They're everywhere. Do you realize there were over 3,000 earthquakes last month around the world? 3,000 of them. Did you hear that? I'm telling you, it's coming to pass. Famines, pestilences, incurable diseases. They're telling us now that they got super bugs.
drugs and they don't have anything powerful enough to cure them. I'm telling you, Jesus can cure them. Jesus can cure you of whatever is ailing you this morning. Somebody help me preach. Amen. He talked about our love waxing cold. A homosexual takeover. Israel back in her homeland. And Israel surrounded by enemies. I'm telling you folks, every one of them are coming to pass this morning. And so my question is, how can you read one newspaper? How can you look at one newscast and not want to fall on your knees and cry out to God, have mercy on me, Lord, and forgive me and save me. I don't want to be lost. And I don't want to be lost. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Every day you wait. You're playing Russian roulette with your soul. That's right. Every day. I don't know if you saw, but I did. Brad Stidham, pastor at Mayaka City. Did you see his post this week? Friday morning, good Friday. He was all suddenly awakened by a loud noise. What he discovered was a crash in front of his house. He jumped up and ran to see what it was. And it was a CRV, a Honda CRV, trying to fight a semi. It didn't turn out too good for the guy in the CRV. He ran across the line and hit the semi head on and was killed. Instantly. Good Friday wasn't so good for him. A friend of mine, pastors in San Mateo, just outside of Palatka, Florida. One of our mutual friends, nephew, walking down 295 in Jacksonville, and a car hit him. Killed him instantly. 38 years old. See, the devil's telling some of you, I oh, don't need to get worried about it. I got a whole bunch more Easter's to get right. They didn't. That's right. They didn't. What if this is your last Easter? What if this is your last chance? What if this is it for you? The wages of sin is death. I have offered unto you the gift of life, but you must come. You must accept it. You must receive it from my hand. I will give it unto those who will come, but those who refuse me, they will reap the wages of that sin. And they will go into eternity without my grace and without my mercy, saith the Lord. Ikia tana ye ne ikia la masikia ye na masikia la masai ye na mania kai ye na masikia ye na masai ika na masi ika na masanda na masi. You said in your heart that I do not believe. You said in your heart that I am not even for sure this is real. You said in your heart many things and thought that I did not even know. I have been watching over you. My eyes have been upon you since the day that you came into this world. I have been over you. I have taken care of you. I have loved you. All that I have ever desired is for you to love me back, saith the Lord. If you will come unto me this day, if you will open your heart, I will abide within you. I will prove my love to you. 
I will live in you if you will but allow me to, saith the Lord. Stand with me all over the house. The Lord's talking to somebody here this morning. I'm telling you, Jesus is about to come. Everything is pointing to one thing. The return of Jesus is at the door. Yes. Yes. Amen. This may be your last Easter. This may be your last chance. You could die between now and next Easter. Or, Jesus could come. When Jesus comes, there'll be no time to repent. There'll be no time to pray. There'll be no time to get right with God. So God has brought us together this morning. He has given us a very graphic example through the drama of what great price Jesus paid so that we could have life. We could have it more abundantly. And the Holy Ghost spoken to us twice pleading with souls to come to him today heads are bowed and eyes are closed nobody looking please nobody looking I don't want anybody to be embarrassed this morning so please would you close your eyes and bow your heads I'm going to ask you just a couple of questions here and we're going to pray we're going to seek the Lord first of all I want to ask you this how many of you that are in the house this morning can say beyond the shadow of a doubt with absolutely no reservations at all that if Jesus were to come right now you're absolutely positively positive that you're ready to go that you would be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and forever be with him you're sure of that would you slip your hand up and say praise the Lord hold it up high I want to see it hold it up high you're absolutely sure of Jesus came you're ready to go Hallelujah. Somebody say praise the Lord. Hands down. That's wonderful, but that's not everybody. There were quite a number of hands across this audience that couldn't go up. That means that you know in your heart you're not right and you're not ready. Oh, you may be a church member, but you're not ready. You may attend church occasionally, but you're not ready. Listen, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to get ready. And if you couldn't raise your hand and you couldn't say for sure, then you better make sure this morning before you walk out of here that Jesus is the Lord and Master of your life. Another question, how many would say, Brother Hanks, I came in here this morning with a heavy burden on my heart. I'm going through something. I'm going through a trial. I'm having problems, financial, physical, whatever. And I need the Lord to help me. I'm under a burden. Would you slip your hand up this morning? I need the Lord to help me. Yes, hands all over Hands all over. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hands down. How many say, Brother Hanks? There's something in my life that I know the Lord's not pleased with, and I need the Lord to help me with that. Would you slip your hand up this morning? Yes, yes. Yeah, I see them. Hallelujah. My right hand's down. How many say, Brother Hanks, I need to be healed this morning? I need healing in my body. Would you slip your hand up? All right, one more and we're done. We're going to pray. I mean, say, Brother Hanks, I, 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 I hope that I'm ready to go, but I'm really, really, really not exactly where I need to be. I, I need to really get closer to the Lord. I've been kind of drifting lately, and I'm not really as close as I really need to be. I want to get closer in this revival. Would you slip your hand up this morning? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, folks, I'm telling you. Jesus died. Jesus rose again. And he's coming back. He could come today. He could come right now. The question is, are you ready? If you raised your hand and you have a need, you raise your hand and you need the Lord to minister to you. You raise your hand and you're doing things that you know God's not pleased with. And you want the Lord to help you. I want you to step to the nearest aisle. Join me in the front. Quickly, come on. Quickly, quickly. Amen. You have a need this morning. You raise your hand. You need to get closer to the Lord and step to the aisle and come. Hurry. I want to pray with you. You need healing in your body. We want to pray with you. Hallelujah. 
That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Just step out and come. Step out and come. Step out and come. I want to pray with you this morning. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right, while they're coming, some of you couldn't raise your hand and say for sure that if Jesus were to come right now, you're ready. Well, now's the time to get ready. Now's the time to prepare. If you couldn't raise your hand and you couldn't say for sure, but you're ready. If Jesus came right now, I want you to come and join these that are here. If you're lost and you're away from God, if you don't know the Lord and you couldn't raise your hand, I want you to step out right now and come. There's already people here so you didn't have to come by yourself. You didn't have to come alone. You didn't have to embarrass yourself. I want you to come right now as you're one. Brother Hanks, I couldn't raise my hand. I couldn't say for sure that everything's right between me and God, but I want to get it right this morning. Step out and come. Step out and come. We're going to pray. Hallelujah. All right, I need about 20 people real quickly that know how to pray. I need you to come right here and stand in the front. 20 of you, quickly, come on. Some of you prayer warriors, come and help me right now. Just come and get right here in the front. Hurry, hurry, come on, come on, come on, Brother Rick, come on. Come on, guys, come and help me. Some of you know how to pray. I want you to come help me right now. Come on, come on, help me pray. Come on, Sister Pauline, come on. Come on, help me pray, come on. Come on, some of you prayer warriors, help me. We need help this morning. There's people standing across the front of this church that need the touch of God. They need the Lord to minister to them and help them, heal them, deliver them, set them free. Maybe save them. I don't know, but God is here to help us. And I want you to just reach out there. All right, you that are here, you prayer warriors, just find you somebody. Lay your hand on them right now. Lay your hand on them and pray with them, Father. Right now, in the name of Jesus, thank you for those that are standing across the front of this church. Lord, every one of them has a need. Every one of them needs your help and your touch and your blessing today. Lord, will you come and lay your hand on them and touch them right now. Lord, if they're here and they're lost, my God, would you forgive them of their sin? Will you wash them in the blood of Jesus? Will you make a new creature out of them this morning? Lord, you said, behold, old things are passed away and all things are become new. Oh, God, make them into a new creature right now in Jesus' name. And the power of God move and set them free, Lord. Oh, God, who therefore the Son shall make free, he shall be free indeed. Loose them from their sin today. Those, Lord, that are doing things that you're not pleased with, God, would you lay your hand on them and deliver them this morning? Would you sanctify them and cleanse them? God, deliver them from the power of sin and evil and make them free this morning, Lord. Let them walk out of here different. Let them walk out of here clean and free. Oh, Lord, by the power of God and the blood of Jesus today. Lord, that one that's here with a heavy heart. They're under a heavy burden. They're going through a trial. They're going through trouble. The enemy has come to assail them. Right now, Lord, in Jesus' name, lay your hand on them. Hallelujah. Oh, God, work miracles across the front of this building this morning. Let the power of God move in every need. Oh, I pray for that one that's sick in their body. They need a miracle of healing today. Thank you, Jesus. Not only did you die on the cross, but you went to Gabbath and you took the stripes on your back for our healing. Oh, Jesus, your death brought our salvation, but your beating brought our healing. God, oh, I pray today that you'll lay your nail scarred hand on them. I pray you'll rebuke every sickness and every every disease. Lord, that you move right now in Jesus' name and give us miracles this morning. Oh, Lord. Oh, God. There are those that are standing here that said they needed to be closer to you. Lord, draw them. Draw them this morning. The wise men Solomon said, draw me and we'll run after thee. God, draw them this morning and let them run after you with all of their heart and all of their soul and all all of their mind and all of their strength. Oh, Jesus, thank you this morning. Thank you for help. Thank you for help. Thank you for help today. Thank you for an empty tomb, God, and a resurrected Savior. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord.
gospel we are. Hallelujah. <coughs> Sister Chris, can I pray for you? How many of you know that God can heal migraines? Amen. She's had one now for, for some time. I just want some of you that will believe God with me to reach down and touch her. Okay, I'm not going to ask you to come up here and slap your hand on top of her head. She's already hurting bad enough. But I want us to believe God today to reach down and heal her body. Say this, go. Let's go. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Today, Amen. still healing. Hallelujah. Appreciate you so much for being with us today. I do. If you can't be back with us tonight, I think Brother Hank's kind of held back a little bit. He didn't talk. But I'll tell you what a message. What a message. Amen. Aren't you glad that Jesus is still? He's still letting us know I'm not finished. I'm just getting started. Amen. I still believe it's by his stripes that we're healed. Amen. Hallelujah. Try to be back with us tomorrow night. I know some people say, well, I work and it's hard. I get tired. If you'll come, I believe that you can get a Holy Ghost refreshing. Don't you? Yes. I just Amen. believe that. And uh, just come on back and be with us tonight. We're going to have some good singing. And we're just going to have some good preaching if God will allow us to. And I just look up. I look for God just to do wonderful things. Amen. Amen. If you feel God together with your heart. Do something about it before he stops. Okay? He's not promising you that he'll always come back and deal with your heart. You, you, you listen to him. You answer that call. And let Jesus do the work inside of you. Hallelujah. Will you stand with us this morning? We're going to pray our prayer of dismissal. Father, I give you praise. I give you glory. I give you honor for what you have done in this service for God. I believe, dear God, that the plan of salvation has been put into place. I believe, dear God, in healings, Lord, that have taken place in this sanctuary this morning. I believe that your power has been manifested to change hearts and lives. And God, I praise you for it. There is no other that can heal. There is none other that can save. Only you, Jesus, can do it. And we glorify you. We magnify you. We lift you high. And God, we honor you. And I'm asking you, Lord, 
today, God, today, Lord, that your presence will be felt. And, and Lord, these people that have heard the word of God today, Lord, they may be walking out of the sanctuary saying, if I could just get out of here, it'll stop. God, don't let it stop. I pray for Holy Ghost conviction to get on their hearts until, Lord, the only thing they can do is repent and come to you and ask you to be the Lord of their life. Please, God, let Holy Ghost power just go with them. Lord, don't let the message, don't let the service get off of their mind, God, until they give their life to you. And Lord, we'll fear not to give you the praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.